Welcome to the woods. My name is Erin Gleason, and I'm an artist, photographer, and best-selling cookbook author. After moving from New York City to a cabin in the Santa Cruz Mountains of California, I felt inspired by nature and by local produce to write five vegetarian cookbooks. I do all of the artwork and design for my books, for my home products, and also my clothing line. I'm always drawn to vibrant color both on the plate and on paper. I've taught art at several colleges and I love to support creative learning through cooking, painting, and photography. My goal is to inspire people to gather over good food and art. This is The Forest Feast. Hi, and welcome to the woods. I love eating tomatoes all summer and I found these beautiful heirloom tomatoes that I thought would be really fun to paint today. So if you're joining us as part of the watercolor dinner party series, thank you and welcome. Um, the idea is that you invite people over, do a little painting and then enjoy a meal together. And it's a way to kind of be creative and have some meaningful conversation and just have fun. So let's get started. All right, so I start most of my paintings by getting a lot of paint on my brush a lot of water and a lot of paint and making sort of an outline. You might want to hold up your item and just sort of take a look at it to get a sense of the shape of it. And remember that this doesn't have to be exactly like the item you're holding. Notice I'm going to go back for more. But this is just a painting that's inspired by the real thing here. This is your interpretation of it. So once I have my outline, I'm gonna get a lot of water on my brush, just water, and try to pull that color in. So I'm just using a, a, a watery brush here, no paint on it. And I'm gonna pull that color towards the middle, leaving a little bit of white, which will give it that kind of round shape. And I'm kind of pulling in. And this creates for kind of like a wet on wet situation. So now I can go back with that red color just red on my brush and kind of paint and watch it bleed. Isn't that beautiful? So the wonderful thing about watercolor is that the results are so unexpected and you just have to embrace that and love that. Notice this is much more red than my original, but I'm gonna add some green too, because if you look at any item, there's always so many shades in one tomato. Even if it's just a red tomato, there's like shades of, shades of you know, dark orange and shades of green flex of maybe a little purple in there sometimes. So um, try to pay attention to all the different shades. I'm gonna get a little bit of green here and do some sort of green stripes. Now the more I let this dry, the more defined those lines will be. If you get a little too much, like a little pool of water, you can always use a rag and kind of blot it a little bit. If it takes up uh, too much, paint you can just add some back but I do like to avoid the pooling of water so now I might um, go in for something more kind of maroon if you don't have maroon you can mix a little bit of red and a little bit of brown together either by going on the paint palettes themselves or off to the side so I can get a little red a little brown and mix them together to get the right shade have sort of like a maroon color. I'm gonna use a little bit more water to kind of pull that in. And now I'm gonna work on the stem just a bit. I'm gonna go for one of my darker shades of green. Take a look at the stem. It's sort of like a thick stem in the middle and some sort of smaller leaves surrounding it. And remember, this is just sort of your interpretation of it. It doesn't need to look exactly like that. Don't worry about the, the green kind of blending into the red. I sort of like when that happens. But the more I let this dry, the more separated those colors would become. Still a bit wet though, so they're mixing just a touch. Make a little stem here. Let me go back with a couple other shades of green. So like this palette has a few shades of green, um, but if you wanna mix your own, you can always do that. So you can get like, say a little bit of um, a medium dark green and mix it with brown for more of a hunter deep green. Similar to the way we did the maroon color. 
but this it, I think things get more interesting uh, when you start to like use a few more mix your own colors and use a few more shades of each color all right I'm gonna use a smaller brush for these little tiny leaf details but they're sort of just like long and pointy I'm gonna also dab into a few different colors at once So you can dab into a little bit of one shade of green and then pick up on the same brush another shade of green so that you have more than one color on the brush at one time. And it's sort of like mixing the colors, which I tell my kids not to do. Like, don't mix all the colors up on the palette. But I do it all the time. Don't tell. <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit of brown to differentiate the stem. So I'm just going right back over with brown. As I'm painting, feel free to pause this at any time if you want to kind of work on yours and then go back to it. So now that this is dried just a little bit, I can add some more color and it will start to be a little bit more, the lines that I add will be a little bit more defined. So I'm gonna go back with like a little bit of a darker red. So I'm gonna make my own dark red. I'm gonna take this maroon here. I'm gonna add a little bit of brown. There we go. I'm gonna try to add some of these defining kind of creases or lines in the tomato. And I might add a little bit of a darkness around the edges too. So I think having things a little darker towards the edges and lighter towards the middle kind of adds to that round shape. I'm gonna add a little bit more olive green to this too. And you can always go back and kind of like change the outline to a little bit like if you want to make it a little bit wider in certain points or a slightly different shape you can always do that now I also see a little bit of orange hinted in this um, in the gradation of this tomato so I'm gonna get a little bit of orange a dark orange if you don't have a dark orange try adding a bit of red on your brush just add a little bit of orange here. And the other thing I like to do is kind of uh, do some dots. So I might go for like a deep olive type green that I see in here. I'm gonna do some kind of dots and they'll start to bleed together. If they're, if they're too defined for you, you can go back and add a little bit of water, like drop on top of them. And sometimes I actually like to just add kind of drops of water as it dries because that will add some kind of unexpected texture when it dries. I think having just little bits of white makes it more interesting to look at. This is getting a little muddy feeling right here, so I'm, I'm gonna let that dry just for a second, and then go back and add just a tiny bit more green to the stem area. There we go. I'm gonna add a little bit, a few more, a few more lines. There we go. I'm going to add just another leaf or two. There we go. It feels done. Thanks for making some time to be creative. Have fun, happy painting, and happy cooking. See you next time.